Happy New Year, everybody. Hope 2024 is off to a good start for all of you. I haven't done a book video in a minute, and I wanted to do a best of books for 2023. Still plan on doing that video. I just didn't get around to it before the year ended. However, now that the very first book of 2024 has arrived, I thought we would all take a look at it together. This is Win a Grand Color. It's a book I've been looking forward to, and I wanted to flip through it, share my first impressions, and just check it out with all of you. So that's what we're going to do today. So thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a website, go to squarespace.com slash Matt Day. I'll tell you more about them in a little bit, but let's dig into this book. I really wasn't even planning on making a video about this. I was like seconds away from tearing into this book for the first time, and then I thought, you know what? Let's share this one. This is a pretty exciting one, and one that I think a lot of people would like to check out. So we're going to check it out together. So this is Win a Grand Color, and it's published by Twin Palms. This is actually my very first Gary Winogrand book, so I'm excited to dig into this one. As you can see, this is a pretty big size book, which is nice. It's not so big that it's going to be like hard to handle, um, but it is going to be big enough to actually appreciate the printing and the photos. So the very first thing I'm noticing is it looks like a lot of, you know, sort of telephoto long lens kind of stuff as opposed to a 28 on the street. So not only is it, you know, different from what I'm used to seeing from Gary being in color, uh, I've mostly seen black and white work of his, and it seems like it was always, you know, a 28, a 35, something on the wider end, and usually black and white on the street. You see a lot of street photographers saying, you know, telephoto lenses, you can't do that. You've got to get close and use a wide lens. I don't know. Gary Winogrand. Some people might uh, might be eating their words there. All right, now we're on the street here, so getting to be, yeah, a little bit more kind of familiar field of view and territory that I'm used to seeing with his work. This is a really interesting kind of framing here. You've got the top of the car with this reflection and, you know, seemingly the subject all the way here at the top of the frame. I also like uh, this ad for a cigarette company in the back here on this bus. It says, and watch him light up. And then the next photo, you have this guy right here with the cigarette in his hand. I love stuff like this too. You've got this line that just completely cuts the frame in half going from top to bottom and it's kind of tilted. It's skewed a little bit. Uh, which you'll see pretty often in a lot of Gary Winogrand stuff. And that's another thing that uh, people can be sort of picky about, you know, making sure the horizon is straight, but it adds this different kind of dynamic feel to it. A lot more shallow depth of field on a lot of this stuff as well. Um, you know, you see a lot of stuff, black and white at least, film being pushed, working with a higher speed film, uh, being able to stop the lens down and get everything in focus. I'm wondering if the color film itself, usually being a slower speed, if that has anything to do with just the technical choices that were made. More of this stuff kind of dividing the frame up. You've got this guy in the middle here in the shade and then in the sunlight on either side of him. You've got the people in the background. Got some interesting expressions here. Uh, this one as well. You've got basically this whole part of the frame that's dividing this guy up and kind of putting him in a different little frame inside. That's the kind of stuff I love to see in street photography. Just being able to see how things get kind of divided up and layered on top of each other. Again, more examples of that horizon line being completely tilted, but uh, if this photo were completely you know, straight and vertical, I don't think it would look nearly as interesting. You wouldn't get the same kind of lines going from the buildings and the street lines, as well as the subject right there where they are. I don't know how well this is going to come across through video, but the color and the printing in this book is really great. Another one of those with the horizon lines, this has like a really similar kind of feel with the buildings and the street lines going where they are, uh, similar to this photo right here. And these longer, like really tight frames are interesting. They feel like these little, uh, almost vignettes. You're not getting the whole scene. It just feels a lot more intimate. I love this one right here. You've got this kid with the suit jacket over his shoulder, Joe Cool, and uh, following these women on the street. That's amazing. I love the really strong contrast in color photos like this, where the blacks and the shadows go almost, you know, completely black, where you're losing a lot of detail, but the colors as a result of that just feel so much more punchy. 
as someone who shot primarily black and white uh, for so many years, as of late, I've been trying to shoot more and more color. And uh, this was a really timely purchase. Look at that there. Even squeezed in a Leica mirror selfie. He was truly a pioneer. More of that really strong contrast shooting with the light behind him. Uh, all of the blacks and shadows just going completely dark. Uh, the subjects just pop out so much more. This one is really wild. Um, all of the neon lights reflecting off of this car here, and clearly it was completely dark out. Uh, to get this level of clarity and, you know, I guess just sharpness of the photo, being that late at night, whatever color film was being used here, I imagine they had to do uh, a good amount of work in order to get that scanned in. So kudos to them on that. I love this photo right here. The boxer just barely being in the frame and using the flash, getting a little bit of that shutter drag. I have no idea if it was intentional, but um, the lights right here, sort of looking almost like eyes, kind of mirrors the eyes in this tattoo right here. No idea if that was intentional at all, but I really love this one. I've seen photos from this moment before. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have. If I remember right, it's a black and white image, though. So to see it in color like this is interesting. Stuff like this is always intriguing to me because, you know, including the car hood, um, I like that feel of it. And sort of with this distance, this focal length shooting through the windshield, sort of inevitable. But to leave in uh, the top of the windshield right here, whether that was, you know, intentional in the moment or not, the decision to not crop it afterwards. Uh, it's, it's interesting. That sort of thing, if it were me, I would crop it, but I see stuff like that all of the time. And, you know, clearly either some people prefer it, some people don't mind it at all. Um, but stuff like that just is always interesting to me because that's something I would immediately want to crop out myself, but not my photo. Man, the color on this one just pops off the page. You've got this red car, the yellow film on these windows here, the blue sky in the background here through this glass with no film on it. Uh, just so much going on there. Even the little kind of individual frames themselves. I love that. Another one right here with this line going directly through the frame. Um, I love stuff like that. There's a photo I'm sure everyone has seen. If you've ever looked up any of Gary's work at all, this is probably one of the first photos that comes to mind. More of the long lens kind of stuff on the beach. I really, really love this one. Just the silhouette on the back of the chair there. That's just, I love the color, love the framing. That's a great one to end it on there as well. I love that shot. Here you've got all of the location and year information for the photos. Here at the bottom, it says nine of the photographs in this volume first appeared in Trudy Wilner's stacks, Winogrand, 1964. Six more were included in Jeff Dyer's The Street Philosophy of Gary Winogrand. All others appear here in book form for the very first time. So that's good to know. Uh, sometimes you buy multiple books from a photographer, uh, especially retrospective kind of stuff. You tend to get a lot of repeats at times, maybe just different formatting, uh, different printing. But to see so many of these being, you know, in a book form for the first time, that's really cool. You've got a pretty lengthy uh, afterword here in the back of the book, which is always appreciated. And that is Win a Grand Color. Before we wrap this video up, I'm going to take a minute to pay some bills, tell you about our sponsor today, Squarespace, and why they are the perfect place for photographers. When I first created MattDayPhoto.com 10 years ago, I did it with Squarespace. This was long before they ever decided to sponsor my channel, but I chose Squarespace because it was just a no-brainer. They had everything I needed in one place, and all these years later, they're still continuing to build and add new features to their service, all while keeping it extremely easy to use while you do it yourself. Drag and drop customization, tons of different templates to choose from, along with 24-7 award-winning customer service that are always there when you need them. You can share your work there, have a place where people can contact you or even schedule appointments. You can even set up your own online store. Since I launched mattdayphoto.com, I've sold my own zines, photo books, prints, and merch all through my own website, no need to use a third-party service, and they also have tons of different plugins from third parties to keep everything in one place. Keeping track of your inventory, shipping fulfillment, it's all a breeze with their built-in tools. It's never been easier to build your own website, and you can start a free trial by going to squarespace.com mattday. 
Use the promo code MATTDAY at checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Well, after just the first initial viewing of this book, I'm really happy I picked this one up. Um, As I mentioned, I've been shooting more color lately, trying to continue to do that through the year and just push myself a little bit, not resting on black and white as much as I always have. So this was good timing to pick this one up. If you're interested in picking up a copy of this book, I'll have links down below to Baltimore Photo Space, not an affiliate link or anything. I get no kickbacks on that. They're just very dear friends of mine. So you can check this book out as well as just countless other amazing titles. I'm always buying my books from Baltimore Photo Space, so I encourage you all to check them out. And that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed this kind of format where I just opened up the book for the first time, shared just some of my initial thoughts as I flipped through it. Um, It's not like a thorough book review or anything, but I don't really know if a book needs to be reviewed in the sense that there's never going to be a definitive review of a book. It's just my own opinion as I flip through a book, but I enjoy that kind of thing. So if you'd like to see more stuff just like this, whether it be new books or books that I've had for a long time, let me know and I'll continue doing this one. And uh, yeah. That's it for today. Thank you all for joining me again. Hope you're all having a good new year. Love you guys very much. I'll see you guys soon.